Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at a brilliant little gadget for range finding in the dark, but before that I'm heading to the woods in search of grey squirrels and wood pigeon. Right, I'm back out in the woods after wood pigeons and grey squirrels today and we've actually got quite an interesting attractor here. Now you don't usually think of acorns as being a key food source at this time of year but there's a large stand of oak trees here and they produced a very heavy crop back in the autumn and it appears that there are still a few acorns buried amongst the leaf litter. Now we actually spooked one or two wood pigeons when we arrived and I'm pretty sure that the squirrels should be getting in on the act too. So we should be in for a few shots. With an unseasonable food source causing a flurry of activity among the woodland pests, I'm looking for a place where I can observe the feeding ground and hopefully get a few shots when the diners return. Right, if we needed proof that the squirrels are still on the acorns, then it's here. Now grey squirrels often have a favourite feeding site and it's usually a slightly elevated position where they'll sit and chew away at the shells of acorns to get at what's inside. And uh, it's often a tree stump. Here it's on a fallen tree and you can see all the debris from where they've been feeding on those acorns. So when I pick a spot to set up, I'm going to try and make sure that I can see this because it may well offer us one or two shots. And this looks like a place that offers me a decent vantage point from which to cover the woodland floor and the branches above. With squirrels and pigeons frequenting the treetops and dropping down to forage amongst the leaf litter, shots could present themselves virtually anywhere. Right, well the spot I've chosen enables me to cover that feeding site that we just spotted and I've also got a pretty clear view up into the oak trees should those wood pigeons decide to come back. Now I've put myself in right against this tree trunk, now it gives me a nice comfortable backrest but also it's a really solid backdrop that just helps to disguise my outline. Now I could have gone to the trouble of building a hide but because the main attractor here is those acorns and they're probably starting to dry up now. That, that food source is coming to an end, so I think we're just catching the tail end of it. So had I gone to the trouble of building a hide, there's probably not really very many days left to exploit it. So I've got into position fairly quickly and without causing too much of a commotion. I'm putting on the scope cam today, and that's mostly because the expectation is that we probably will encounter one or two squirrels that are feeding on the ground. They're usually pretty fidgety when they're doing that and it's gonna be tricky for me to communicate to Nicky what I'm shooting at when. So rather than him having to worry too much about capturing those kill shots, at least I've got the scope cam to hopefully get them myself. Now I gripe about this all the time, but I do find it tricky shooting through the screen rather than through the scope. But today I've got the trigger stick tripod here which should make life much easier and just keep those shots a little bit more steady because I'm going to be obviously shooting head up looking through that screen. 
Right, so I'm going to put my head net on and stop talking and hopefully things will start to happen. I may not be bothering with a hide but pale skin can stand out like a beacon in the woodland environment. Slipping on a camo head net is a quick and easy way to make myself less conspicuous. I also put my hat back on. It'll help to keep me warm and the peak will also throw some shade over my eyes. There's a lot of noise from traffic and aircraft today. It's no bad thing though as wildlife tends to get accustomed to it and it helps to mask the noise that we're creating while making the video. As per usual, it's a waiting game now. All I can do is sit tight and hope that the attraction of the remaining acorns proves too much for the woodland pests to resist. Time gradually slips by, but it's not too long before I spot something moving up in the trees. We've got a squirrel in the scope cam, and the first shot looks set to be a close one. Wow, oh, that one was close. It's only about 15 metres away. This scope only parallaxes down to about 30 metres, so apologies if that one looks a little bit blurry through the scope cam. Either way, that's one in the bag, and I can see it's stone dead on the ground, so I'm not going to break cover. I'm just going to sit tight and see if we can't get one or two more. It's a cold day in the woods, but I couldn't think of a better place to be. The sit and wait tactics brought a fairly quick response, and I'm not planning to go anywhere for the next couple of hours. Patience is rewarded and it's back on with the scope cam as another opportunity presents itself up in the trees. It's another squirrel and it's another close one, but this one doesn't appear to be interested in those acorns. Well, that was another very close one and believe it or not, it was actually coming down exactly the same tree as the last one but it paused and it was hanging out, looked like it was actually feeding on berries from the yew tree next to it. Now, I'm surprised that they're choosing to feed on yew berries if there were acorns around, so that may well suggest that that food source is coming to an end. We've got a wood pigeon in this time. The problem is that this one has landed right behind a branch that's perfectly positioned to shield it from a shot. Right, there's a pigeon in right up in the oaks, but it's obscured and I can't possibly get a clear shot on it where it is. So I'm going to leave it in the hope that it may just move to a more exposed position, or at least act as a decoy and maybe attract one or two others that may just pitch somewhere where I can get a shot. While that pigeon stubbornly refuses to shuffle along the branch up in the treetops, something on the woodland floor catches my eye.
It's a squirrel, and I'm going to have to thread my shot past some nuisance stems to connect with it. Well, that's more like it. It looked like that one was actually munching on an acorn. It was very close to that feeding post that we spotted at the outset, but unfortunately it wasn't sat up on it. And there is quite a lot of wild privet on the ground here, so I had to weave the pellet through the undergrowth, but it found its way, good clean headshot, another clean kill. Typically, the disturbance did make that pigeon fly off, but you can't have it all. It's back to sitting, watching and waiting. After a couple of hours hunkered down, I'm starting to get fidgety and could do with stretching my legs. But I reckon there could be more sport to be had from here if I can sit it out for just a little longer. A movement in the treetops catches my eye and it looks like we might just be in for another squirrel. Right, there's a squirrel, right up in the oaks. But there's a haze of twigs in the way, I can't get a shot through to it, but they don't usually tend to keep still for very long, so fingers crossed, we'll soon be in a spot where I can get a shot at it. And sure enough, the fidgety squirrel soon settles in clear view of the scope cam. Well, that squirrel that I couldn't get a bead on did come out into view. It was quite a long shot, but the pellet found its mark and it's dropped like a stone. Well, it's gone very quiet here now, and I'm really not too surprised, given the amount of action that we have had in a relatively short space of time. Now, there are still one or two pigeons flitting around on the far side of the oaks, so what I'm going to do is pick up the squirrels that we've shot and move across to the other end of the woods and see if I can't bag one or two birds. And if that does go to plan, you may well see it in a future episode. I'm afraid to say those wood pigeons continued to elude us, although I did manage to bag a couple more squirrels. Now it's the Air Gun Show news. This is the Air Gun Show news, brought to you by Valley Arms Shooting Supplies. There's been another funding boost for the Airgun Target Sports as Sport England has pledged £1.29 million to increase participation in shooting. This adds to the £7 million UK Sport will provide in the next four years ahead of the Tokyo Olympics. A British shooting spokesperson said it was a really exciting time to be involved with target shooting in our country. Plus, Jen McIntosh has been confirmed as one of Great Britain's elite athletes. The Scottish air gunner and three-position rifle shooter is on UK Sports World Class Performance Programme and has been classed as podium potential. This means she'll get lottery funding for the next four years. She's joined on the programme by prone rifle shooter Ken Parr and a host of shotgunners. Basque is bigger than ever. The organization's membership now stands at 148,000, and it took a record 10,000 calls on licensing issues just last year. 
Head of membership David Ilsley said bringing so many people together for shooting means that we have the strength in numbers to do the job, whether with government, the media, or when working with many interests involved in shooting. And finally, the countdown has begun to the British shooting show no less than a month away. The unmissable event takes place once more at Stoneleigh on the 10th to the 12th of February. It's the place to find air gun industry giants such as Air Arms, Armex, Brocock, BSA, Daystate and the Shooting Party, as well as a load of optics manufacturers, retailers and clothing brands. We'll be roaming the aisles at Stoneleigh to bring you a full report. That was the Air Gun Show News. Right, what we have here is the Nightsight Mountable Laser Rangefinder, which is a very handy piece of kit for hunting at night. Anybody who uses night vision will know that it's notoriously difficult to estimate range when you're looking at the flat, one-dimensional image on your night vision unit. This neat little add-on takes away all of the guesswork, giving you an accurate range reading in the dark at the press of a button. A great thing about this rangefinder is the fact that it mounts directly to the night sight scope clamp, which means that it's always trained in the direction of whatever it is you're shooting at. Now, unlike a conventional rangefinder, you can't look through it, but if you're worried about alignment, I've tested it out several times on targets that I've then paced out the distance to, and it's always been pretty much spot on. Now, it's very quick and easy to attach, and the attachment arm is reversible, so you can mount it on the left or right. Weighing in at just 150 grams, this is a very light unit and it won't make your air gun feel side heavy. It's also water resistant, so there's no need to be afraid of using it in proper hunting conditions. And it comes with the reassurance of a two year warranty. The Night Sight Laser Rangefinder is very easy to use. You just press the power button on the right to switch it on and then press it once more for a continuous range reading until you press it again. It calculates distance from 500 meters right down to just six meters, which makes it perfect for estimating hold over and hold under at typical air gun ranges. You use the mode button on the left to toggle between fog, horizontal distance, fog and horizontal distance, speed and normal modes. Press and hold the mode button and the unit of measurement shifts between meters and yards. The display is extremely clear and easy to read. Apart from showing range to target and battery level, it also shows angle of elevation. That reading enables you to know the exact upward or downward angle to your target and further refine hold over or hold under to compensate for the influence it has on the pellet's flight path. Supplied with mounting bracket and 3 volt CR2 battery, the Nightsight Mountable Laser Rangefinder costs £299. When you consider that this gadget provides a solution to what has long been the bane of after dark hunting, I reckon that's a justifiable outlay for anyone who's prepared to splash out on NV optics. Whether you're working out aim off for long range rabbits or close range rats, this neat piece of kit will help to keep your shots bang on target. That's all for this week, but we'll be back in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.